Word up, Toronto Truth Seekers. We're here on uh, another street action here. We're at the end of May, summer 2010. Smile, you're on Summit Camera. Police have been hard at work putting up dozens and dozens of special closed circuit television cameras in and around the city's core. Now, as the G20 Summit approaches, there will be even more eyes looking down on our streets. 77 closed circuit security cameras like this one are being installed at locations in the financial district and near the convention center. A major announcement has been made uh, involving the price of the G20. That's what we got on this side. The price could soar. G8, G20, three-day summit. We're talking about $900 million. Is now, they're saying, over a billion dollars. It's going to be spent on the security, saying overtime fees, install the cameras, buy the sound cannons. Police say there's nothing covert about this. The cameras are clearly marked. If there are violent protests or property damage, the cameras will capture it. I imagine this will be a big event. As for the whole issue of Big Brother watching, most people we talk to today say they don't have a problem with it. No, I personally don't. I think it's a safety issue with everyone down here, and I think it's better, precautionary. It's not a big deal if there's some, especially during that G20, so not a big deal. Cameras aren't the issue here, it's location. These street vendors near the convention center will be forced to move out on June 11th. A two-week shutdown they can't do anything about. Obama's not getting fries here. Oh, I wish it was shaking sand if he was coming here, but uh, hey, I'm not. Uh, it's, how you call them, uh, once in a lifetime for those people to come here, so let's be uh, Canadian true. <laughs> Meanwhile, closed-circuit cameras are common in major cities like London. Coming in July, they've got uh, the Queen is going to be here. Uh, so, you know, that'll probably be another big celebration, Canada Day. Well, all this stuff is leading up to, uh, to the New World Order. Here we have Barack Obama, Nicolas Sarkozy, Gordon Brown, the former, former uh, head of the UK. And uh, here we have a nuclear reactor in Iran. And the government of Iran has said that their nuclear program is a peaceful program. But the uh, leaders of the Western world don't quite believe that. They want sanctions. And that's why uh, I attached this flyer here that uh, Toronto Truth Seeker Black Krishna made uh, a few weeks ago, wondering the question, G20 summit versus the nuclear 9-11. Now, this is the kind of warnings that we've been getting. You better stand up for your rights and never give up your freedoms for security. Well, the cost of security at the G20 is coming under fire from Parliament's budget watchdog, Kevin Page. He's confirming that his office will be investigating the controversial $1 billion security bill for the G8 and G20 summits. I want to know how they're spending a billion dollars. Well, they've created a whole community for a one-day event. What is being fenced in? The world leaders are being fenced in, all their delegates, central bankers. Somewhere in the middle of the woods, Canadian wilderness, northern Ontario, you can see a huge compound. To meet in Huntsville to discuss uh, the important needs to boost the world economy. We're inviting the world leaders from the G20 uh, to visit the city of Toronto. Uh, the reality is, Mr. Speaker, in a post 9 11 environment, uh, security is not going to come cheaply. Yo, are you the Toronto Sun today with all the fencing? Unbelievable. Down Bay to Front, along Front to Simcoe, south to Bremner, along the south side of the Roundhouse, then the east side of Rogers Centre. It will go along the tracks to Blue Jays Way, then Front Street up to Windsor. There will also be a smaller perimeter fence surrounding the Harbour Castle Weston, down on Queen's Quay. This is Canada. We have the right to go where we want without being interrogated by the police. With the layout of the perimeter fence, it will run along Front Street here, for example, and then up Blue Jays Way. The design has pretty much kept most condos outside of that fence, but there are condos, lots of them, that are right on the edge, and the people who live there are worried about the summit weekend. It's definitely going to have a huge impact, and I can tell you a lot of people are not going to be happy. If we are going to be shut down, it will affect our business for the two days, but I think it's part of the cost of being right downtown here there will be a traffic control zone that will run along King to Young, down to Lakeshore, up Spadina, then along Blue Jays Way, back to King. Should people avoid downtown Toronto on that weekend? Yes. Should they enjoy the rest of our great city? Absolutely. While there will be massive traffic headaches that weekend, there will also be headaches leading up to it. Bring your patience. We'll do what it takes to ensure that they're safe. Honourable Member for Toronto, Danforth. Well, the bottom line, Mr. Speaker, is that the Conservatives have mismanaged the summit. 
maternal health has turned sour because of ideology. So guess what? There's now a new priority, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister thinks that the banks need help in Canada. Brandon, and we just heard from a citizen, and uh, Brandon, you probably want to know this, the TD Bank in St. Andrews, it apparently got hit as well. Uh, Toronto police have one person under arrest. With well, nearly a month to go, the arrest of G20 protesters have already started. A 22-year-old man has been charged with mischief after anti-summit graffiti was painted on bank branches and police property near Dundas and Spadina. He's a U of T student of political law. Cops are looking for a second graffiti artist using images from a beefed-up array of surveillance cameras. An element of deterrence. Police say the new cameras are temporary. They will come down when the G20 summit is over. The cameras in the entertainment district will stay put. Stephen Harper, zero dollars. He actually has no money. He's going to spend uh, the rest of Canada's money, the uh, taxpayers' money, to pay for this. The federal government will not compensate businesses for any damage uh, from vandalism during the summit. Uh, we're hearing from the TTC, the chair Adam Jambroni, telling people to, quote, avoid the downtown core. There will be some uh, limitations on uh, TTC service uh, for that weekend. Uh, and, of course, the burgeoning cost, uh, perhaps the biggest headline this week so far, nearly a billion dollars for security. A billion dollars is not a, a number that I've used for the cost of security, but I've just described what's, what we will be doing for security, and it comes at a cost. Police have a new weapon, sound cannon. That's right, LRAD. Forces uh, fo focus sound. Uh, the closer you are to it, the louder it'll be live en route to police headquarters. Sue, uh, what is everyone talking about this morning in terms of the G20? Well, you can tell, the, Anne, that the summit is uh, fast approaching because it's creeping more and more into the daily headlines with multiple stories. Uh, first of all, we're going to hear more uh, from Cam Woolley in a minute about uh, some G20-related vandalism. Well, Anne, I can tell you it's uh, a bit of a case of uh, goodbye graffiti right now. That's the name of the company that's contracted to clean these up. Uh, Brandon is the technician that's doing this. We'll just grab him quick. Uh, uh, Brandon, how's it going? It's going good. It's, uh, it's coming off pretty good. And uh, what are you going to have to do? Some of it was on paint? Yeah, we're going to have to prime it out and then paint it and get a sample and stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it looks like you have your work cut out for you. You expect to make some uh, overtime during this G20? Oh, yeah, lots of overtime, definitely. Oh, Chief of Police lauds peaceful protesters. That means that he supports and will allow peaceful protests to occur. So, if these uh, cops start going haywire, we can say they're going against their own boss. These people want to protest uh, lawfully, that's fine, but by uh, damaging things like banks, that does interfere with the regular folks that live here, work here, just uh, trying to make a living. A picture speaks a thousand words. Well, you know, if you're being sprayed for doing nothing, you might want to take a picture of it. So far, there have been reports the downtown core will be divided into three security zones. The most restrictive section will be set around the Metro Toronto Convention Centre. Are you okay with the big security parameters being put in Toronto? The city being closed down? You're a terrorist suspect, you know that? I don't know if you know the truth, but you better research it because time's running out. The security parameters are coming into Toronto, okay? Signs posted around the city already warn of traffic disruptions from Young to Spadina and from King Street to Lake Ontario. Toronto's going to be closed down June 26 and June 27. For 20 leaders of the world, they spend more on this than they did the Olympics. You understand that? It's not a joke anymore. Anybody hear about how they have the food, water and air poison? It's now a public record and they hope to kill off 95% of the population through the food, water, and air. You don't need additives in your air, folks. There never was before, and you guys were fine.